Dan and Lonies. It's me, your good buddy, Uncle Ben. It's me, Hollywood Steve. And today we're going to be telling you guys why the original 1978 John Carpenter Halloween flick is still so freaking good. As if we need to tell you. And this seemed like a good time as any to talk about the greatness of this film, considering you got the, the brand new one coming out later on this week, which I personally am excited for, and I like the fact that they said that this is basically a direct continuation of part one, which yeah. is easily the high point of the entire series. Sure, and if you're excited for the new Halloween, that means you only have to watch one movie to get up to date. If you want to hear all our thoughts about the Halloween movie, you can check out our podcast, episode 16. We covered Halloween just last year. And then this Wednesday, that is tomorrow, we're going to be talking Halloween 2 for episode 79. Of course, the thing that makes Halloween the great film that it is is John Carpenter's direction. John Carpenter is able to keep the killer in the shadows, to keep the characters from knowing there's any danger, yeah. uh, to let us in on enough that we know they're in danger. Yeah. Everything is slowly revealed. Uh-huh, and that, that's something that I didn't even think about until I'd seen this movie, again, many times, is that the whole time all this stuff is going on and Mike Myers is running around killing all these people, none of them even know who it is. No. Like, Laurie Strode has no clue that that is the legendary escaped, you know, child killer Mike Myers back on the loose. Mm -hmm. As far as she knows, this is just somebody who's wearing a Halloween mask that's out tormenting them all night. Yeah. And despite the fact that John Carpenter uh, barely included any blood in this movie at all, it still carries a level of brutality that you don't see in many horror movies. I mean, we do get, of course, a child killer at the beginning, yeah. um, but we later see Michael Myers stab someone into a cabinet. Yeah. One of the things that you absolutely can't ignore whenever you're talking about the greatness that is Halloween is John Carpenter's phenomenal soundtrack that is pretty much all just like basic synthesizer and stuff. It goes yeah. to show you you don't need like lush orchestral mm -hmm. arrangements and a million musicians to make a memorable score. Yeah, I mean, it really it adds to the feel of the movie. I would even go as far as to say this is one of my favorite horror movie soundtracks of all time, if not mm. my if not my all-time favorite, really. I like it so much that I've gone about transcribing all the all the parts of the movie onto guitar, which you can learn over on my YouTube channel. Check it out. Yeah. And through the process of transcribing the music from the movie, I found that there's really only a couple of different central themes and chord progressions and stuff that uh -huh. appear in all of the different parts of the soundtrack and I think having that kind of repetition really I think makes you bond with the soundtrack rather than just having something that's different every 30 seconds in the movie this has a lot yeah. of repetition in it which could easily be boring if the music mm -hmm. wasn't so damn good you know Ben one of the things I love the most about this movie and I think that really sets this movie apart from a lot of other horror movies of the time is the atmosphere mm-hmm dang tootin I really like that it just feels like any town USA it really does it you feels know? like just middle America the suburbs yeah. Kids are walking around, trick-or-treating, everybody's having a good time, and it feels like fall. Uh, it also helps that so much of the movie takes place at nighttime, because then you can't really see, you know, yeah. that all the grass is still bright green and stuff It's like all the that. same in the dark. <laughs> now, one of the main reasons that this movie works so doggone well is because the cast is pretty much perfect. It's exactly what it needed for this movie. Mm -hmm. Jamie Lee Curtis, she's young. This is one of her, her first big things. She has that innocence that mm -hmm. sort of naturally comes across, but she also is able to carry the, the tense moments. She's mm -hmm, able to definitely. seem strong, but also seem afraid, which yeah. she would be, obviously. Yeah, that's something I was gonna say, is like a lot of times in these older horror movies, they just pick you know female roles that looked weak and innocent and helpless yeah. and stuff. And she does that well, but at the same time, whenever she starts really having to, mm -hmm. you know, fight back and protect mm -hmm. the kids and all that stuff, she's very believable as a really strong woman as well. She stabs him with a knitting needle, stabs him in the eye with a with a coat hanger. Yeah. Like she's in the moment, she is fierce, and and she's able to pull that off. We also have Donald Pleasance, who is a veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd been around for a long time. He's a, a well-respected actor at this point. Yeah, absolutely so. And his performance in this is, I think, definitely his best as Dr. Loomis, which he would reprise yeah. several times throughout. I think around like five or six. Is yeah, he's in so many five, of them. I think. Yeah, five yeah. is when he started really just like going nuts and just like 
shaky kids, <laughs> screaming at him and stuff. In this movie, I think he's pretty believable as yeah. a guy who really tried to help Michael, but then also knows what a threat he is, and he's trying to keep him from unleashing the beast and killing a bunch of folks. And maybe the most important character in the movie, and the most important member of the cast, is the shape himself, Michael Myers, and he is perhaps the greatest thing in Halloween. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Uh, I love the fact that this movie starts off with that long extended POV shot. Mm -hmm. And it's cool too because especially if it's your first time watching the movie, you don't even realize the entire time that it's a little kid who's skulking through this house and that is a stabbing shocker. the girl and stuff. Yeah, so at the very end of that opening sequence when they pull the mask off and you see that it's a kid, it's so shocking and weird. And the thing about Michael Myers is that he's actually played by about five different uh, yeah. people throughout. Nick Castle most frequently played Michael Myers and is definitely the person we would think of when we think of the way Michael Myers walks and mm -hmm. looks. The thing that's most scary about him is his physicality. Yeah. He he walks in a very particular way, he moves in a very particular way, but we don't get any facial expression. Yeah. And we don't hear his voice. Uh-huh. Um and, and he was just referred to by, by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill as the shape. The shape. Such a cool design for that character too, the fact that he wears a mask that is the mask of a human. Yeah. I think actually makes the whole thing <laughs> way scarier, you know, because it's like that's the only way he knows to look human is to put on a mask of a blank human face. That's exactly. the idea of humanity uh, is to look like a white William Shatner mask. <laughs> How poetic. One of the things that makes Michael Myers his most frightening mm. is the fact that there is no motive. Yeah. At least in the first Halloween movie. Yeah, later on they start trying to really explain away his backstory and his motivations and yeah. stuff, but I really love that in the first one all that you get is he was just born messed up, mm -hmm. you know, maybe he's a sociopath or something like that that just has no emotions or feelings. I think that's so much scarier than like, here's why he would be doing all this stuff. He was a tortured individual as a right. kid and all that. I like it better not knowing. Yeah, that's so much more frightening to think that he basically just chose these girls yeah. because he, they said something to him when he drove by. Speed kills, mister. Yeah, <laughs> that's but enough. The idea that that was enough for him yeah. to just kill them for that. Um, and they lived close to his childhood house. That's his only motive is that they're nearby and that's frightening. Absolutely so. So there you go guys, five of the reasons why we think Halloween is such a doggone great movie. Let us know in the comments below why you love or don't love this movie. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Ring the bell, hit that thing for notifications of all kinds of hot new videos dropping all the dang time here on our channel. Thanks for tuning in and happy, happy Halloween. Halloween! Bye! Let us know in the comments below what reasons you think are, make, good this. <laughs> that was good.